I'd be lying if I said I'd, you know, I want to do anything other than be at home making music. I do enjoy playing out. I do enjoy traveling and getting to play my music for people and, you know, having this new show that I'm doing. It's really fun to bring it to people who haven't seen it. And so there's, there's, there's still excitement in the traveling. And I, I, you know, there's nothing like making some shit and then playing it out. Austin, Texas. King Tubby's my man, all right? I think he was like the first villain. Or maybe James Brown was the first Jay Della. And then King Tubby. I don't know what the order was. Yeah, that could be it. That's a safety. <laughs> safety, they won't crucify me on the internet. What'd you say? Let's talk about some music. After I heard, you know, a few of his records, it was like pretty obvious that his sound was very influential on modern music. I feel like producing, being at home, and working on music is a total different mindset from being on the road, playing shows, and I like it that way. You know, I like to be home and not have to worry about making the drop. Like, I like to just be at free at home in the studio, and if it happens, I make bangers, whatever, that's cool, but I don't like the pressure, you know, and I feel like when I'm out a lot, I feel pressure to like make music that people can dance to or whatever. I don't like that feeling, you know, but at the same time, it's part of what I do. I just roll with whatever happens at home. You know, if I'm at home and I'm making slow music, I'm just gonna roll with that. You know, but then one day, like, I'll just be making some shit and it's something that I can play out, and there it is, you know? I feel like it's an organic thing. You know, I find things, combinations that work, and then, you know, sometimes I stick with them, but then sometimes I like to surprise myself. You know, like, I don't like to play the same show twice. I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. You know, it's, I have a feeling of how we'll start, but where we go, I don't know. It's like the closest thing I get to having that jazz feeling of knowing that I don't know where I'm going, and we don't know where we're going, we don't know what's gonna happen. I love that. You know, that's what really keeps me doing it. I wouldn't have fun playing the same set every night. I couldn't do it. It's almost a tragic thing to be taken away from the studio when you're like like really peaking, you know? You just know that you're like on one, dude. Like rolling out of bed, getting on it all day, all night, all week, all weekend. And you gotta get on plane. And then you gotta go out for a week and you come back and it's like, it's a different energy. Which is, it's inspiring because I'm gonna hear some shit this week that's gonna be tight. You know, I'll be, all right, go home, make some shit. You know, so it, you know, it, it's, it's good, it's a good thing. It's funny, you know, with, with technology, I, you know, I, I use a lot of stuff in Ableton and, and Reason and stuff, and I buy a lot of toys, and I feel like the more I get into all the techie stuff, the less music I make, you know? So at the end of the day, it's always like the same stuff that I use. But you know, there's new things to flip. Because of technology, I have new sampling sources. You know, I have, you know, access to libraries that I would have never had access to ages ago. Having all these possibilities, it just makes it a lot more inspiring for some. <laughs> I could organize things and make make everything a lot easier for myself, but I'm not that guy. I, it's like my Ableton set is like my room. It's just a mess, and everything is all all over the place. I don't know where this goes and that goes, but I like it, you know, because then I don't know what if I'm in, at this clip. I can oh this clip over here maybe that'll work, you know, like. You can, you'll probably, if you see any of my sets, if you see my face, that's my face is being honest. Like, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. Sometimes I hit a button, you're like, 
oh, it works, you know? And it's like, I'm, I'm excited. Sometimes I'm like, all right, let me fade this out. You know, this sucks, you know? But yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, having that, that option definitely makes for like more interesting scenarios. You know, it does, it can be anything. The technology is, is, is opened up so much for me. You know, I've, I've been able to collaborate with people from other sides of the planet. You know, obviously it's, it's best when you can be in the same space as someone. And I think sometimes people take advantage of that, the emailing, and they're like, oh, well, shit, just email me the parts and I'll do whatever I... Sometimes it's cool because that person probably works better alone, you know, but you can't take away from that synergy when you have, you know, a good vibe with two people, three people, whatever it is, in one room together. So, you know, when you can have that, that's great. You know, you should take advantage of it, but technology helps when you can. As far as education goes, you know, kids who are in the sticks, who have nobody around them who are interested in producing music or whatever, they can go on YouTube and they can learn how to get started and, and find their voice. Actually, there's been a few times where, you know, there's certain things that I want to know about Ableton, specific things, like quick ones, and I can go on YouTube and say, oh, well, how do you use this device in Ableton? And then, you know, I can look up some shit in Dubspot, always have everything for every device in Ableton or whatever. And I can find out some shit. As far as projects go, I just finished uh, working on the Thundercat album, his, his second album, and I'm working on a, a Captain Murphy record, like a rap record that I, uh, I started. I'm doing the show, we call it Layer 3, because there's two screens and, and lights in between, kind of making a 3D effect. And it feels like it's all synced up, but it's not, you know, every time we do it, it's different. And, you know, we add more content to it, and I change up the set, and freak them out, the visual guys, they're like, what are you gonna do next? I don't know. I think the plan is though, is to start trying to make it a 2.0 situation, try to like expand the show, make it better, you know, try and improve it. And you know, that, I think that's, that's the next step. The visual artists who are working with me are really close friends of mine, thankfully. So they know me and they know my aesthetic choices. So there's a lot of good, communication and trust there you know like we know each other we they know I love Stanley Kubrick and they know I love you know Shinya Tsukamoto and all that stuff he knows me we can we can build together so it, it's really cool that it can happen that way well I'm about to plug you big right now dude oh man <laughs> Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore Dove Spot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.